So I think that for now, we're past the in-depth anatomy stage of the project and we can get into some real focused effort on developing mechanisms. In this video, I'm going to introduce two new mechanism designs, a gearbox for controlling the movement of the fourth and fifth metacarpals and a simple compact two axis hinge for controlling the CMC joint of the thumb. You might also notice that I have a new microphone. A lot of people were telling me that my audio quality has been lacking. So I just want to say a big thank you to my supporters on Patreon who make it possible for me to buy new stuff like this. Even the smallest of pledges are really greatly appreciated and help to keep me going. So before I get into the new components, I want to mention the metacarpal motor component, which I talked about in another video recently. I wanted to be certain that it was a reliable design before I started working on any new parts. So I went through a series of prototypes and perfected things like tolerances between gears and I also added some alignment features too. One helpful thing that I did was to actually make a skeletal version of the motor with as much open space as possible to see directly into the motor and find out which gears were moving well and which weren't. Since I'm still learning to set up prints for my Anycubic Photon, I occasionally run into some issues like flattened areas or warping but I think that this motor design is just about as small as you could realistically go with the gears this size and it still all seems to go together fine just using automatic supports in Chitu box. If the design was any smaller, I think I'd need a more carefully planned out support structure to keep everything dimensionally accurate. But for now I've been having lots of success just orienting the part on a 45 degree angle and just using automatic fine supports. Another modification that I made was to slim down the motor. My target for the width of all the motors in the palm was 80mm, so for that reason I needed each motor to be roughly 18mm to allow for movement at the MCP joint as well as the CMC movement of the metacarpals. I was able to shave quite a bit off the sides of the design, but it did result in some very thin walls, just a little too thin to print properly, so in the current design there are some gaps in the housing. Ideally, it would be sealed to keep dust out, but since I'm not sure yet how I'm going to arrange all the shell components, I think that this design is appropriate for now. To be clear, my intention is to design the skeleton, or the inner mechanical frame first, and then add the shell components later on, which should also help with wire management. So now on to the gearbox for the 4th and 5th metacarpal bones, which move at the 4th and 5th CMC joints. I had some MG996R servos, which I've had for a long time. They were very, very cheap on AliExpress, so I don't feel bad taking them apart and using them for components. As I mentioned before, the 4th and 5th metacarpals have a range of motion of roughly 10 degrees and 30 degrees respectively, and they rotate on a diagonal axis across the palm. In the simple gearbox I made, I was able to get a ratio very close to 3 to 1, which gets us conveniently to the 10 and 30 degrees of motion we need. I used two output pinions and one of the penultimate gears from the servo, which is super useful since I have a way to discreetly attach a potentiometer directly to the output pinion, and I also have some areas that I can screw the metacarpals into easily. Now it's important that I take the potentiometer reading from the fifth metacarpal as opposed to the fourth, because it moves three times further than the other, so that will give me a broader range of values through the potentiometer and make the reading more accurate. I also want to mechanically drive the fifth metacarpal as opposed to the fourth because it will require less torque to effectively drive. And that's because the gearbox increases the torque from the fifth to the fourth metacarpal by reducing the range of motion. In the same way, since I know that I only need 30 degrees of rotation in the fifth metacarpal and the servos that I'm using will likely have 180 degrees of rotation, I can use a very small pulley at the servo compared to a, a much larger pulley at the joint itself and doing that will greatly magnify the torque that I'm able to get out of the servo motor. So I still need to add a pulley to drive this component and a way to route the cable actuation system and critically I also need a more robust pivot system. So looking at the current design it's easy to see that any force applied in this direction is going to put a very large moment on the gearbox and the point at which it attaches to the metacarpal component. The solution would be to add some kind of arm at the top here so that it has two pivot points along the same axis. 
I would obviously need to do this for the rear one too, so it could get tricky figuring out how to have them all so that they don't collide as they move through the ranges of motion. So looking at the thumb component now, as I mentioned before, the thumb's metacarpal moves in three different axes, the most awkward of which is the axial rotation of the thumb, which is not something you have conscious control of. I think it would be possible to create some kind of gearbox system to produce this motion, but I decided to omit that particular degree of freedom for this prototype, because I think it can quite easily be made up for with other tweaks. Like for example, the thumb may only have around 50 degrees of motion this way in a rail hand, but by increasing this range of motion, we can have a more dramatic change in the direction of the thumb, which I think effectively stimulates axial rotation. Realistically, it's probably not a particularly useful range of motion anyway, so I don't think we need to worry too much. But by increasing this range of motion slightly, which will be very easy to do in my design, I think we will still have the same level of functionality that a real hand would have. In the thumb's CMC component, we have a slim potentiometer sandwiched between two bearings, which take any force off the potentiometer as well as bearing loads on the thumb itself. We have a pulley on one side, which is how the part is driven, and a disc on the other side, which looks like a pulley, but this part actually just sits against one of the bearings and accepts the central rod. The entire assembly sits on another pulley for the other axis of movement, which has bearings and a potentiometer just like the other axis. Using the same setup as before with MG90S servos and a quick pulley system, I was able to test it out and it appears to work fine, although clearly this part needs more refinement. And just a note, because some people have been asking lately, the material that I'm using for the inner cable is ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, which is the same thing as Dyneema, which quite a few bionic hands use. It's very strong, but it's also very inextensible and it's also used as fishing wire, and that happens to be what I bought it as. And then for the outer cable, I'm using PTFE tubing, which has the advantage of being very low friction and sort of self-lubricating in a way, and also quite incompressible. Some people have also noted that there is quite a big difference between the inner diameter of the PTFE tubing and the diameter of the inner cord. And that is a little bit of a problem, but at this stage I'm not worrying about it too much because it makes it very easy to assemble the parts to make quick prototypes like these. So to sum up, I'm pretty happy with all of these components at this stage. Up to now, I've just been testing the feasibility of these systems, essentially just trying to figure out what I can get away with when it comes to resin printing. Although these components have issues and factors which need optimising, I'm happy enough with them at this stage that I'm going to use them to build a fully integrated palm once I have a suitable wrist design. So as always, I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons who've been enjoying my exclusive progress posts and Nilheim Mechatronics sticker packs. In the next video, I'm going to be going through the design of the wrist and how I'm linking all of these parts together to make the entire palm. I hope to see you all then.